An online friend and moderator in my personal Discord, Alberio, has done the unthinkable and created the most comprehensive visual novel girl tier list template I've seen online to date. It has well over 1,000 visual novel female characters, mostly from decently popular translated titles, but also a handful from really popular untranslated visual novel titles. Despite how long I've been reading visual novels, even I haven't read every single title on this list. So to remove the mild clickbait I put in the video title, I'm going to be ranking roughly 160 visual novel heroines on this list going from bottom to top. First, we're going to start with the F tier, aka F these characters. First is Arisa from Farther Than the Blue Sky. There are a few other characters that weren't able to make this template that I would say I dislike more than her, but I still think Arisa is a good representative for the bottom of this list. Of every visual novel developer I've read, Chewable Soft easily has my least favorite comedy. In this visual novel, most of the characters are just straight up mean to the protagonist for no reason, and Arisa emphasized this the most. She's straight up a sadist right from the beginning, and I just never really got why. This includes the whole calling the protagonist a pervert I hate so much, but also just basically bullying him. She was a big reason why I couldn't even get that far in Farther Than the Blue Sky and ended up dropping it. Next, we have Airi from Amairo Ionauts. Only the common route got fan translated, and well, let's just say there's a reason why Amairo Ionauts is generally considered the least memorable of the modern Yuzisops. To put into quick perspective, the main protagonist is a teacher and adult age, and for some reason they added a high schooler who's actually the main character's cousin. So not only do you have an age gap heroine, not only do you have an incest heroine, and from my memory, she was easily the character that took part of my least favorite type of use of humor, unfairly calling the protagonist a pervert and shaming him for it. I'm lucky there's at least one heroine I really liked from Amairo, otherwise I would have dropped it a lot earlier, partially due to Airi. Next we have Aoi from Hoshizora no Memoria. I'd rather not have a heroine tell me to go die and jump off a bridge every five minutes. If this is favorites, aka the developer's name, idea of funny humor and totally sane characters, then I don't want to be part of their writing staff. Next we have Lucia from Rewrite, and my god, she's easily the most overrated and disappointing visual novel heroine I've ever seen. In the common route, she was already terrible, verbally and physically violent tsundere, pretty much the worst of that tropes. But she doesn't get any better in her route. It does start great with a good mix of mystery and romance, but with an it's immediately ruined by the worst Ryukushi 07 melodrama ever. They tried to make you feel bad for Lucia, even though a good amount of the drama is her fault. So I just hated Lucia by the end of her route, somehow even more than I hated her in the common route. Next we have Mahiru from If You Love Me Then Say So or Suki Suki. This is another chewable soft heroine, and once again, these characters are just straight up mean to the protagonist for no reason. The only reason she's not any lower on this tier list is because apparently she was the protagonist's ex-girlfriend in the past for like a few weeks. Otherwise, she's basically just the worst type of every blonde lolly tsundere stereotype I've seen, including shamelessly calling the main protagonist a pervert for no reason and no redeeming features. Next we have Aoi from If You Love You Then Say So or Suki Suki. This character doesn't even have a route and yet she's just as if not more mean than to the protagonist than Mahiru. She basically bullies him for no reason and I never understood why. Suki Suki was lucky I had a heroine I really liked. Otherwise, this girl alone might have considered making me drop the visual novel even earlier, since you see her more often than Mahiru. Next, we have Saya from Saya no Uta, who's also in the running for most overrated girl ever from visual novels. I really want to spoil why so badly, but basically, if she was supposed to be endearing or interesting, any of that was brought down by the continuous shock value factor that the story was trying to go for, and the actions that she and Fuminori did basically made me hate them as characters, especially since you were supposed to kind of care for what they did apparently. Next we have Honoka from Farther Than the Blue Sky. While not quite as obnoxious of a sadist as Arisa, she still partakes in the protagonist shaming humor pretty much right from the introduction. Honoka was particularly disappointing since she's a childhood friend, and well, she was pretty damn unlikable from the beginning. Next we have Misako aka the headmistress from Princess Evangel. This one is maybe kind of cheating because it's pretty clear the writers were trying to make you hate this character from the beginning, so that's pretty much the only reason why she's not at the way bottom. That said, I don't think the character development she goes through in her daughter's routes makes up for the hatred you have to go through first. Next we have Kei Ayamine from Muv Love. I see a lot of people love this character and I don't get it. She's just really annoying. There's some characters that act like trolls and are funny, but Kei goes way too far most of the time and makes it a point to be as uncooperative as possible even when she should be compliant. And there's just so many moments of her just being a bitch for no reason that are just flat out uncalled for. 
This applies to all of her appearances, including extra, unlimited, and alternative. The only reason she's not any lower is she actually gets some kind of interesting character development, but otherwise I just really really never liked her whenever she was on screen. Next we have Mare from Hoshizora no Memoria. Basically the only reason she's even higher than Isuzu is because she at least has some kind of interesting feelsy development stuff related to her story. Otherwise she's just a lolly and likes to verbally abuse the main character and have her pet dragon light him on fire for no reason. Once again, Hoshimemo in favorite with her penchant for really unlikable heroines and really bad comedy at times. Next we have Erika from Sugar Style. I thought Sugar Style was very easily the least funny Smee visual novel to date and Erika is a big representative of that. This is a little kid side character in a visual novel full of college age heroines and she's just pretty damn annoying to boot. Just a character just didn't really need to exist. Next we have Maria Ushiromiya from Umineko. I get that she's basically a low-key autistic girl and the stuff she had going on through the mental trauma she was getting because of her mom's abuse makes her personality kind of understandable but it doesn't make any reads of Umineko slice of life that much more frustrating for me to deal with. Especially when you see Maria talk for a good amount of the time. She even brings down a lot of the murder mystery parts for me. Next we have Ririko from Shar no Kuni. This girl is just straight up a child sex abuser. And I can't believe the visual novel basically made no attempts to even address these issues of her, let alone attempt to redeem her properly. The only thing saving her is taking part in a pretty cool plot twist. Otherwise, once she starts talking, especially in her fan disc route, she still has that obnoxious bully abuser type that I've complained about previously in this tier. Finally, we have Mana from Amatsutsumi. This is a very unfortunate case because Amatsutsumi is one of my all-time favorite drama visual novels. I quite liked all the main heroines, but I just really did not like Mana as a character, which sucks because I thought she had some potential as a childhood friend who had similar powers to the main character. However, this character was just straight up a bully status to everybody she meets, and while she had some mild points of character development, there were just so many times where she basically reversed it, and while her story was interesting, I could not stand her by the end. Normally, I would have an E tier, but there would be so many characters where I would basically just be extremely indifferent or met on. I'd rather not heavily arbitrarily increase the length of this video, but with a lot of boring indifference. So with that, we're going to go to the D tier. Girls I consider okay, kind of worth talking about. Nekoko from Yumemiru Kusuri was someone who I liked a lot conceptually. A girl who's always on drugs and definitely showed that through a bunch of wacky scenes. I don't think her personality or character development was that particularly memorable, but at least the concept was done at least once well enough. Megadu from Savit of the Witch is a very unfortunate case. She's always the first character I think of who's really annoying with the Yuzusoft special of protagonist pervert shaming humor. With how annoying Megadu was about it, I almost considered putting her in F tier. However, in her route, and in a couple scenes in the common route, she had some of the most wholesome scenes in the whole visual novel. So those things alone were enough for me to consider her in D tier, in addition to just being a gamer girl. Haru from Jisenjo no Mao seems like the type of girl I would like. She's quirky and supposedly smart. However, I ended up finding her quirky humor just not really that funny and honestly kind of annoying at times, especially in chapter 1. She was supposed to be smart, but never really felt like she was on par with the main villain. Basically the only reason she's on this tier is because the emotional side of her route was actually really good. Maho from Sankaku Renai is another example of a character that's basically carried by her route. I don't consider her personality unlikable per se, I just think she's relatively boring compared to the other heroines since she's more of the straight man compared to the other quirky weirdos. But I like that for once, as she's a childhood friend, she had a romance that was predicated on an accidental awkward rejection that probably shouldn't have happened and her route tackling that pretty well. Subaki from Koikari Love for Hire is a pretty good example of a mature-ish woman character done well. On one hand, she's a helpful and down-to-earth teacher to most people, but when you consider that this is a rent-a-boyfriend visual novel with a lot of comedy, she has her moments of humor as she has to pretend to have a younger boyfriend to her mom, and she has her gamer girl rage moments that are pretty funny, but outside of that, her personality isn't that memorable compared to other Asa Project girls. Manshiro from Majikoi S is one of the few lollies I can say I wholeheartedly actually like. I liked her whole thing being part of the Kuki family and how surprisingly wholesome it was, and just generally seeing how she fit in the family. Sadly, I was kind of uncomfortable dating some of her age since she clearly skipped classes even if she is kind of mature personality wise for her age. Misaki from Aokana is a weird case. I think this is a hot take, but I actually think her humor style tends to be more annoying than funny most of the time. I guess, I'm just, I guess I'm just not a fan of her coy, 
tease troll type of personality. Thankfully, Misaki has the benefit of having really good development related to Flying Circus, which is basically the only reason she's on here. Extra 2, her fan disc, definitely helped with that as well. On the other hand, Makina from Grisaya is basically only on here because I think her quirky, raunchy humor is actually really funny. Sadly, I was not a fan of her route for multiple reasons, including being extremely slow-paced and her starting this whole weird papa thing for romance, which I definitely did not like. Muramasa from Full Metal Demon Muramasa is an interesting case where she's basically up here because I really like her role in the story. I don't think her personality is anything special, but it's likable enough. But I like the development more so of her relationship between her and Kagiyaki, especially in her route. Beatrice from Umineko is an interesting case where I thought she was a lot better when she was first introduced, but got less interesting over time. I did think her trolling of Battler was amusing, which is basically the main reason she's even up here. Eventually figuring out who she was was pretty interesting in theory, but considering how Umineko ended, I just ended up being a little bit more indifferent to her than I initially expected. Himari from Furudava has a really odd case. I think she's surprisingly kind of boring for a childhood friend, which is unfortunate because I tend to like them in theory. She's basically only on here because in her really super short fan disc route, she suddenly got a lot hotter personality-wise somehow, which I kind of wish she applied to the main route. Kaname from Sugar Style was one of the few things I actually liked about Sugar Style. I was super hyped for Sugar Style since I love every other SME visual novel I've read, but I just thought the humor and characters were a lot less interesting and funny than expected. Thankfully, Kaname was the one exception, with her having a very witty, sarcastic personality that stuck out, and kind of rare. Unfortunately, she's brought down by Sugar Style's very disappointing writing too. Komari from Little Busters is definitely my favorite girl of that visual novel, and one of my favorite key girls. I really like her sweet, wholesome friendship vibe she has with the rest of the crew, especially with Rin, but I also just really like her generally upbeat, positive personality. Like many of the other Little Busters heroines though, I unfortunately was not a fan of her heroine route drama. Sora from Baldur's Sky is an interesting case where I think her story and circumstances are a lot more interesting than her actual character. The reveals you learn about her as the game goes on are quite interesting. Her actual personality? I guess it's kind of a generic Sunjade, I guess. She just have some wholesome moments here and there though. Ayaka from Princess Evangel is a case where I admit I kind of liked her flirty personality, but her secretly being timid was an interesting, mild twist. Other than that, her route was kind of sort of interesting, but also kind of forgettable. Ai from Sujiro san no Junai Road is probably my favorite of the main three heroines. I like that she has one of the most unique romance progressions of any of the main heroines, especially since a lot of it is in the common route. Sadly, this, sadly, this does end up being a double-edged sword because not choosing her causes the game to forcefully try to guilt trip the player unnecessarily, and it makes I a little bit inconsistently likable. That said, she does have some softer moments that I do like. Saya from A Sky Full of Stars is a very unfortunate case. For the vast majority of the series, she's quite likable being a nice, quiet childhood friend with a pretty solid development in the childhood friend flashbacks. Unfortunately, she's basically the main cause of melodrama in both her route and Hikari's route in the original Sky Full of Stars. The way she acted sadly heavily brought down my opinion on her, which sucks because she's quite good otherwise. Toka from Nukatashi is a villain heroine I was actually most interested in. She had shades of interesting depth as she interacted with the main protagonist, but sadly, at least in the original Nukatashi, we don't really get to learn her full backstory and only gets mild development at most. Maybe if I read Nukatashi 2, I could see Toka being a bit higher. Nanoha from Baldur's Sky is an amusing case where I think her base personality and my weird biases towards childhood friends is way more interesting than her actual role in the story, which isn't that much at all unfortunately. She also has a tendency to cry a lot for some reason. Otherwise, I just like her basic, wholesome enough childhood friend personality. Shigure from Nekopara is a case where normally I would feel weird about liking a little sister character, especially in a series that's all about cat-girl fanservice. But Shigure is just so weirdly over the top of how much she loves her brother that I couldn't help but be amused, at least a little. Otherwise, she's just kind of a bland character as expected from the series. Toka's mom from Sharno Kuni has a very interesting case in that I like her way more than her actual daughter Toka, who is supposed to be the main focus of Chapter 3 of Sharno Kuni. I felt like Toka's mom was the one who got the actual interesting development, while Toka was just kind of an annoying tsundere. That said, while this development was nice, the fact, the fact that Toka's mom is limited to this chapter for screen time, besides Chapter 1, does make her kind of limited on how much I can remember her. Yuri from Bokuten is the perfect example of wasted heroin route potential, considering I love the rest of the series. Yuri had a really interesting concept going on with her being overly nice and too much of a yes man, especially to her sister. Sadly, her route has what's probably the worst plot twist in any visual novel I've read to date, 
which heavily dampened her potential character development. Riho from Koitsuru Natsu no Last Resort is a girl I simply like because she just fit in certain traits I like. A little quirky and ditzy, but also romantically assertive. Otherwise, she kind of just has some depth as a rich girl, but given Koi Diesel's writing, she didn't really stick out that much. I do like Ushio from Marshmallow All the Way Home, but I thought the whole aspect of her being a lolly ne san big sister character was pretty overrated, and also kind of uncomfortable how much they keep pointing out that she's a lolly, especially in her route. I would say the main thing that I would like about her is that she's this wholesome backbone of the group, and her generally mother-like personality is pretty nice. She's not that deep and doesn't get that much character development, and doesn't really hit too many of my personal biases, so she's only D tier for me. This isn't a spoiler, but Yoiko and her delinquent form Ryoko is a case of a character that I think has potential, but I just fortunately have to wait for the fan disc to be translated. I like that she is a mature older sister type on the surface to the protagonist, but in reality, she has a pretty amusing stoic delinquent personality. Of all the delinquent characters, I'd say I like her personality the most, but as said, she's missing some development that I'm guessing will be in Virgin Road. Anjay Ushiromiya is a good case where I think her role in the story and personality are pretty okay, I guess. I like how she's basically the main Kickstarter for actually figuring out the actual mystery of the story, considering Battler both kinda sucks at it and eventually gets caught up in the weird emotional narrative Ryuka she's trying to tell. That said, while I like Anja's detailed backstory, I thought it went on way too long and Anja herself can be a little bit too emo at times for my taste. I will say some of the drip she gets, especially in episode 8, is pretty nice to look at though. Rounding out D tier, we have Rika from Alcana. I can understand why people consider her the least interesting in the main Alcana heroines, but I actually think her base personality is a decent enough Yamato Natashiko like personality without making her super boring. I would say it's just too bad her route doesn't really focus on her and romance and more of the villain of the route. If Rika had more personal development, I think she would have stuck out a little bit more, but for now, she's just a ride by in D tier barely with a solid, likable enough base personality. And now we're going to go into the C tier. These are girls who I think are decent and worth talking about, if a bit flawed. Aine from Bokuten is someone who's generally a bit simple-minded, and that remains for most of the visual novel, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because she is kind of entertaining. What does bring her up to C tier is that in the climax of a couple of routes, she has some very memorable moments. Fumiko, also from Bokuten, is one of my favorite side characters in a chapter-specific story. She just has a relatable story about how she's super shy and really unconfident in herself, especially her looks. The drama she goes through with the guy she likes and her best friend are quite interesting even if the ending is a bit cheesy in a dark way. Akane from Rewrite is a pretty amusing troll character. I didn't really like her route that much since I thought it was a bit too long and she didn't appear for a good amount of it, but my opinion of her rises up because I just really like the ending of her route. Otherwise, she's just a decent enough, kind of funny character. Rhea from Kinkoi Golden Love Rich is someone that's a little interesting to rank. In the routes that focus on her, she's really, really good. Unfortunately, outside of her routes, I'm not super big on her. She does have her moments where she tries to give the main character Oro some advice and likes to keep it real, but generally I'm not super into her overly blunt and sometimes outright mean personality, even to people she doesn't even know, even if you do eventually come to understand why she is the way she is. Amane from If My Hearted Wings seems like someone I would love a lot more. She's smart, but quirky and airheaded. I just think her airheadedness went a little too far and it's made her maybe less charming than I would have liked. Still, I did really like her story and her route and backstory on why the Glider Club became the way she is, especially since the way she held herself back. Orihime from A Sky Full of Stars probably has the least amount of development of the main four heroines in the original visual novel. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because she is a chill person with a kind of assertive leader type personality at the same time. Outside of that, I just liked how her route which is by far the most chill, which makes it stick out among the other routes which have a little bit more melodramatic. Chihaya from Rewrite is someone I consider generally pretty underrated both for the Rewrite series and Key in general. She is admittedly a bit simple-minded and kind of stupid, but at the same time, she keeps things very real with everyone, which I think helps make her one of the most surprisingly sane characters in some of the routes, which helped my enjoyment of her in her route among others. Mikazuki from Musicus was a quirky girl I was pretty interested in before I read the visual novel. While she unfortunately didn't live up to my hype, she's still a decently likable, unique, quirky character with an interesting plot progression. She definitely had her funny moments and some kind of interesting serious moments, but nothing that really blew me away. Michiru from the Grisaya series is someone who I mostly like due to how hilariously funny she is. A lot of her humor relies on her obvious stupidity and her weird tsundere act, 
I do think the depth she gets in her route is pretty interesting, but it's brought down by two major things. I thought the drama aspect was reaching a little bit too much in the supernatural, and just dating her is not really ideal because she's just a little too stupid for my liking. On the other hand, Yumiko from Kursaya is kind of the opposite of Michiru. In the common route, it takes quite a while for Yumiko to become popular, but she eventually gets better. I eventually came to like her by her route, which is funny enough by far the least complex route in the whole series. But it also means she got the most down-to-earth character development, which I definitely enjoyed. But even then, I like her low-key supporting roles in various other routes. Rena from Higurashi is definitely a decently likable and decently funny character. She has some quirks that are quoted quite often from other people for good reason. And the chapter that focuses on her and her character depth is definitely pretty memorable. I just don't think her character is great enough to stick out to be higher, but she's definitely a fun character to be around. Asa from If My Hearted Wings is probably the most consistent character from the visual novel. She is a little on the simple side and probably gets the least amount of character development, but sometimes simple is better and she was definitely likable from start to finish with a decently wholesome, shy, but willing to improve personality. Yume from Hoshizor no Memoria it's a character that takes quite a bit of time to get to know, but once you do, her story is pretty interesting. This is one of the few cases of the forgotten childhood friend trope that I actually like because it's less that she was forgotten per se, and more that she was purposely avoiding the main character, which is actually an important dramatic plot point. She just unfortunately fell into the Hoshin memo thing of all the females just bullying the main character for unfunny humor reasons, and you unfortunately do need to read Eternal Heart for her full character development, but if you do, I'd say you get a decent amount of enjoyment out of her. Alkari from If My Hearted Wings is one of the better overly serious type of characters for me, or what I like to call the hall monitor types. She starts off antagonistic as one might expect, but I like how in basically every route she appears in, she ends up being completely fair and gives the glider club the support they need once they have enough members and stuff. What helps is she has the best non-sequel route in Flight Diary, showing her role in the glider club despite not being part of it. Cannon from Marshmallow All The Way Home in theory should have been my favorite character. She has that wholesome dede dede-ish personality type, if a bit ditzy, but she also has some great scenes about how she's a good leader of how she talks to her customers. The main flaw I have with her is I thought the plot of her route was kind of stupid and they pulled the whole forgotten childhood friend trope that I don't really like. Saki from Making Lovers is probably my favorite mature 30-ish year old heroine in a route-based visual novel. She is a bit on the shy side, but she has her own goals befitting of a working adult while still having the benefit of being in a SME visual novel, so she has some pretty good humor too. Nothing stick out, but someone nice to have. Yuzuyu from Furudaba is a tsundere who I didn't really like that much in the con route and basically everything that's not in her route. Thankfully, her soon soon is not only just being constantly angry at the protagonist for good reason, but the main protagonist actually has a good reason since he was kind of a pervert to her and he also trolls her a lot, making her reactions actually kind of funny. Thankfully, when you get in her route, she gets pretty much 100% dede dede, so it's honestly pretty nice to see for a tsundere archetype. Perhaps a bit rushed, but it certainly made her and her route a lot more enjoyable. Mashiro from Aokana is an interesting case of extremes. In her route and her fan disc Extra One especially, she has some of the most wholesome romantic development I've seen with some great date scenes. Unfortunately, she's just kind of annoying outside of her routes, and is basically just a simp for Misaki, and any of that jealousy she shows towards the protagonist is just really, really annoying. Sophia from Harem Kingdom has the benefit of being the first Harem member to be recruited, and her story was decently wholesome. Maybe not the most wholesome character in the game, but she has the mix of being consistently likable among other personality traits, like being an Ojo-sama, while also having the classic hilarious Smee humor I love so much. L from King Koi is similar to Akari from If My Heart of Wings in that she's actually a pretty good overly serious type of character. In this case, she's the direct guardian to Sylvie and despite her being generally protective, she's thankfully able to be calm and even joke around in certain moments. I actually like that her route tackles the theme of her not dropping her own personal desires while still being a guard. Something that I think could have been done in other types of routes with similar personality types. Otherwise, Besides just her being an overly serious girl, which is fine, she's just decently likable, but nothing stick out. Natsumi from Sharn no Kuni is yet another character of extremes. In the vast majority of the original Sharn no Kuni story, she's really frustrating to interact with because of her extreme shyness, including incredible avoidance to the main character. When she finds out the truth and develops, she becomes a lot better, having a way more openly wholesome personality towards the end of the original, 
and especially in her after story in the Sharon fan disc. Kiki from Harem Kingdom is someone I like roughly about the same as Sophia, but she just has the advantage of a more interesting backstory of being an ex-slave that was saved by the main character, and it's also one of the only main haremettes that has actually something of character development relating to wanting to study even after the harem gets together. Otherwise, she takes part of the goofy humor, just like almost all the characters in Harem Kingdom, and since it's Smee humor, definitely something I like. Nene from Sabbath of the Witch is definitely a case where I say her route story is a lot more interesting than her actual character personality. Her personality is fine, she's just a nice quiet girl that likes to help others. I guess her circumstances related to her magic was kind of funny. Figuring out her backstory and what she wants to do to get to her romance was pretty nice, but other than that, I don't think she really sticks out that much personality wise. Next we have Raiha from Marshmallow All The Way Home. In the common route, I actually really liked her character development and her quirky, teasy personality was something I actually thought was pretty fun. Sadly, I was just not a fan of the friends with benefits thing she had going on in her route. It is probably the most tolerable friends with benefits route from the ones I've read, but still not particularly good, and it sadly just brought down the whole route as a whole, in my opinion, including Raiha's character. Nanase from Nukatashi is a pretty decent Gyaru character for once. In her case, I like that she takes advantage of her looks and her fame to escape and not interact with people. At the same time, I do like how she's basically the mom of the main group, being the reliable one who can cook and battle on the front lines consistently. I do think she bends over a little backwards too much for June though. Arika from Honey 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 is also a decent Gyaru, but compared to Nanase, I like that she's much more upfront about her being a rebel in a, in a setting about forced gender segregation to the point she straight up applauds the main character for accidentally grabbing her boobs when they first meet. Pretty unique to say the least. Naturally, this leads to her being pretty romantically assertive in her route, and it was decently fun, but due to the short length of the visual novel as a whole, it did make it so she maybe didn't get quite the screen time she deserved. I'll be honest, I don't get the hate for Sumugi from Sabbath of the Witch. Does she have the least character development of the main heroines? Sure. But did she need it? Not really. I actually like that of all the main heroines, she's the most emotionally stable and just felt like the mom of the group. Her route was also just the most dramatic. It was nice to have her role be kind of more the stable core that was helping the other characters grow. That said, I will admit she's still not that great of a character, but definitely underrated. Yoshino from Senren Vanka is an interesting case. Where I, while I actually quite liked her development in the common route from an overly serious girl to someone more open about her emotions, I also liked her romance with Masaomi the best since it felt the most natural as she's the most advertised heroine. Sadly, once her and the main protagonist get together, she and her route become a lot more boring, and what's even worse is she eventually caves into the stupid protagonist pervert shaming humor that I think is unfair that Yuzusoft likes to do, which seems completely out of character for her. Sukasa from Honey 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 is unfortunately also a little underdeveloped, even though I liked the setting and the humor. Thankfully, Tsukasa was a decently done childhood friend, where a lot of the drama, I guess, was the fact that they made her a character that was the daughter of the person who was in charge of the forced gender segregation laws to begin with. And I liked that she had decent enough wholesome interactions with the childhood friend, aka the protagonist. I am generally not into cat girls, and the only reason I like Cinnamon from Nekopara is because I think she's easily the nicest animal girl in terms of personality I've seen, but she also has some decently funny, lewd jokes. If she weren't an animal girl, she probably could have been a bit higher. Hisui from Tsukihime is sadly just the less interesting character personality-wise compared to her twin sister. That said, she's still way better than the other Tsukihime characters. Finding out her backstory was quite interesting, and she has some pretty interesting emotional stuff, especially since she turned out to be the main protagonist's maid. Outside of that, she has a kind of a typical stoic personality, which kind of made her boring sometimes. I know Sugumi from Ever17 is the fan favorite, and I definitely do like her. While I really love her emotional reveals, she's just sadly kind of a bitch for a good amount of the visual novel. I mean, it makes sense when you figure out what she's been up to, it just took a little too long for me to consider her one of my favorites. Konatsu from Koikari Love for Hire seems like the type of character I would love. She's really quirky and makes a lot of funny sexual jokes. While she is funny, I think her jokes got a little too repetitive at times, and she just felt like a lesser version of Sheena from Sankaku Renai. Yoshioka from A Sky Full of Stars is probably my favorite overly serious love interest in visual novels. Despite her serious nature, she has some surprisingly decently wholesome interactions and development both in her routes and in Orihime's route in the original. The way her romance gets started in Fine Days is a little goofy, but otherwise I like the simple wholesomeness of it. My actual overall favorite character from Ever17 is Sarah. 
There's not really much to say. She's just probably the first quirky love interest I've met in any visual novel I read, which should help make her stick out. And while she's decently memorable, there's just been other characters done better. Akko from Making Lovers is a pretty funny character. Definitely one of my favorite sister characters, which honestly isn't saying much because I tend to not care for them that much. Honestly, they just made Akko a childhood friend instead of a non-blooded related sister. I think they could have created a much more compelling story, and I would have liked her a lot more. Risei from Princess Evangel, I thought was a pretty decent main title heroine. I like how she just helped the protagonist get into the school, and was just generally very proactive in making the school co-ed, making her have a surprisingly unique character archetype. Outside of that, she's just a nice-ish popular girl, and that's basically all that is to her. Back when Dracula was the only Yuzu Soft visual novel I've read, Elena definitely stuck out as my favorite openly perverted heroine for quite a while. Since then, I've read a lot more and she hasn't stuck out as much unfortunately, especially compared to other Yuzusoft heroines that are a lot more likable. That said, I would still say she's overall pretty unique and decently likable, even compared to her copycat in Kana from Cafe Stella. Konomi from Princess Evangel I thought was the funniest character from that visual novel. Maybe not the character I'd be most willing to date, but I just thought she was hilarious and just said the darndest things, especially when she tries to learn about sexual stuff, and definitely one of the more memorable funny scenes in the VN. It does also help that she's one of the few characters that actually gets character development even in the common route of accepting Masaya. Sanai from Clanon is pretty easily the best mom character in any visual novel. Not that she really has much competition to be fair, although it does feel weird not pairing her with her husband which I would normally do. They're some of the most supportive and funny characters I've seen from parent characters. The only reason she's in C tier because I just thought they incredibly overdid her sucking at baking trope which was just kind of a product of its time when girls had to suck at cooking to be funny in anime and visual novels. Asane from Nukatashi is a character that definitely appealed to me a lot at first. She's a quirky gamer girl nerd that's cynical and has a funny, funny rambly lines and just really random moments. Over time though, I thought she was just ended up being a little too mean to some of the main heroines, especially Misaki. So I'm, my opinion on her dropped over time, but thankfully she has enough emotional moments to make up for it. And now we're moving on to the B tier. Characters that I think are quite solid, just not a top favorite. Sachi from Grisaya is definitely in the running for quirkiest character in the Grisaya series. I liked how she takes things overly literally and goes over the top with her competent maid stuff and how much she passively aggressively bullies Michiru. While I liked the psychological stuff and her backstory, I thought there were some parts that were just a little bit too over the top unbelievable for my liking, but otherwise I like the themes. Lee from Majikoi is one of the better characters that got introduced in Majikoi S. I liked her hilariously bad puns, and her route was pretty fun with an interesting enough plot for the Majikoi series. Sylvie from Kinkoi is a little hard to rank for me. She represents my opinion of Kinkoi pretty well, good but inconsistent. On one hand, she has some of the best dead dead moments I've seen from a heroine, especially with her childhood friends. However, these moments don't happen too often, and a lot of her randomly rebellious moments actually makes me feel bad for Elle for how overly selfish she acts at times. It doesn't help that her route was mildly disappointing and that it covered too much boring rich girl stuff that I didn't care about. Kohaku is definitely the best character from Tsukihime easily. Even from the beginning, she has a unique, quirky personality. But between the twists you learned about her in both her route and Hisui's route, she definitely came out as by far the most memorable part for Tsukihime for me. Karen from Making Lovers is a surprisingly good tsundere. I think she gets a little overrated just because you help her from the streets, but otherwise her route is pretty solid with probably the best overall romance and character development. And considering that Making Lovers is one of my favorite moige, that's definitely a plus considering that this is adult age romance. Kata from Sankaku Renai is a pretty funny foreigner character. I kind of wish they kept her overweight thing just a little least a little while longer because so we could have some more weight diversity in visual novel heroines, even if it wasn't as naturally appealing as others. Thankfully, she was still pretty funny when she transformed into her skinny self, and especially since he had a lot of funny English and broken Japanese. Miyu from Chrono Clock easily had my favorite arc in the common route, where the main guy has to help her confess to the guy that helped her out at one point. This part is quite fascinating and one of the better arcs in a purple soft game I've read to date. Sadly, once this arc concludes, Miyu just kind of fades into the background and her route is apparently a 15 minute epilogue, but I didn't read it because it was locked behind other routes since the other heroines in Chrono Clock kind of sucked. Rin Tosaka from Fate Stay Night is definitely one of the best tsundere's ever for good reason. That said, 
her personality doesn't really revolve around the, the soon and the daddy stuff. Rather, I kind of just view her as someone who's just really competent and badass. Though I guess you do get more of her soon daddy parts in Unlimited Blade Works. Thankfully, she has good enough screen time in all three routes, getting surprisingly good development in all three of them. Amane from Grisaya is probably the least quirky of the main five heroines, but I have to admit, I mostly like her just because she has amusing, perverted jokes. Also, finding out the way that her personality is due to her backstory was quite interesting as well. DD from Chrono Clock is a solid, but not amazing, foreigner character. I can see how some people would be annoyed by her, but I can't lie. Ingrish from Japanese visual novels is a weird guilty pleasure of mine. It helps that Didi is pretty easily the nicest heroine of the main ones from Chrono Clock. I liked the idea of her developments that happened in her route, it's just I didn't think they got enough screen time unfortunately. Stacy is definitely my favorite maid from the Majikoi series. She's obviously a parody of American girls with her rough way of talking as well, saying things like rock and fuck. What could I say? She's pretty entertaining anytime she's on screen. Chihiro Himukai is my favorite heroine from a one heroine only visual novel. It helps that it stars a friends with benefits story that I actually like. Since it's adult age romance and actually takes time to develop the friends with benefits aspect instead of just kind of throwing it in with a stupid plot and melodrama that many other friends with benefits routes end up doing. Chihiro herself does start a little immature but she does grow up a bit in the five hours that the visual novel lasts. We do get to know her and she's a pretty nice and thoughtful person overall. Nanaru from Sankaku Renai is definitely the funniest sister character I've seen in any visual novel. And honestly, that was basically what carried her for me. She had a lot of raunchy humor that definitely fit the series, and she was a blast most of the time she was on screen. I'm not a fan of incest romance, especially when it's non-blood related sister ones, so her route just felt weirdly melodramatic for no reason. Hikari from A Sky Full of Stars is an interesting case because I actually thought she was at her best in the childhood friend flashbacks because it showed she was an integral part of getting Akito and Saya to open up with some very wholesome scenes. She still has solid moments in the present day, especially in her route, and is basically just a much better version of Ageha from If My Heart Had Wings, down to having the same voice actress and being a red-headed childhood friend. I did think she had some flaws that could have been improved though. Kotori from If My Heart Had Wings was a solid main heroine. She starts off as kind of bitchy, but has some pretty great character development even in the common route. I like how she's a handicapped heroine in a mainstream visual novel, which is pretty nice to have for once. And I'd say for the most part, they handle it pretty well, with some wholesome romantic scenes both in her route and in her after story route in Flight Diary. Fumino from Nukatashi is a solid mix of a Yamato Nadashiko type and a badass and quirky character. That does sound like a weird mix of tropes. Nukatashi somehow makes it work, and she's pretty amusing and badass that goes through some shit. Kind of wish they didn't make her a lolly, but otherwise she was pretty good. Isuka from If My Heart Had Wings is one of my favorite side characters in any visual novel. You mostly get to know her through flashbacks, and I liked her kind of unique go-getter personality, and once he actually shows up in the present, she has some pretty wholesome stuff, especially in Amane's flight diary route. Shione from Renai X Royale is in the running for stupidest character from any Asa Project visual novel, which is saying a lot. She says and does a lot of stupid things that makes me laugh really hard. The only thing that got kind of repetitive for me is her Mugyu tick she gets whenever she gets mad, but it's a minor thing. Kanako from If My Heart Had Wings probably has my favorite base personality from the series. She's the closest thing to a quirky girl that isn't outright socially stupid like Amane. In fact, Kanako, despite her mildly quirky nature, is surprisingly socially smart, being a good mediator that shows up from time to time. I kind of wish her route wasn't based on a weird miscommunication, but, it was, but at least it was resolved well enough unlike Ageha's. Hanako from Katawa Shoujo probably has my favorite route in Katawa Shoujo. Even though she's a shy person, I liked how her route goes through great lengths to show how one would properly get an unconfident personality through some trauma and how she could properly grow from it and how to properly treat someone like it. Yoru from If My Heart Had Wings is probably my overall favorite character from the series, but it's tough. She starts off arguably bitchier than Kotori, and this might be weird to say, but I actually really liked her route even though it's technically shared with Asa. It's one of the few threesome routes that I actually like, because at least to me, it made perfect sense for it to happen, and Yoru got some surprisingly pretty good development out of it too, with one of my favorite lines towards the end. Emi from Katawa Shoujo, even though she doesn't have my favorite route, is definitely my favorite character from Katawa Shoujo. She's a solid Genki girl, a go-getter type of person who just naturally has one of the most appealing personality traits of the main five heroines. I wasn't a fan of the writer self-inserting his speaking style of making her curse all the time in dialogue, I think it went a little bit too overboard when the rest of the characters didn't talk like that at all. 
Sylvie from Wonko to Karasso had a surprisingly dark backstory, and seeing her go from an understandably quiet girl to opening up to a much nicer family was just a really nice, wholesome story to see. Hotaru from Amatsutsumi definitely had my favorite route in the visual novel. Her base personality was fine and likable enough, I guess, but she's the perfect example of a character that gets much more fascinating once you find out more of what she's really like. Ruili from Kikokugai is a character that took part in one of the most hilarious plot twists in visual novels I've seen, and I just don't want to spoil what it is. Tsubaki from Jisenjo no Mao was easily the standout character for me, which might be a weird take. I naturally like Dede Dede girls that are shy like her, and the fact that her chapter goes a little bit more into her dark side, even if it was a little short-lived, was one of the most fascinating reveals I've seen for the character archetype, and I really wish it were expanded upon more. Akari from Making Lovers was easily my favorite non-romanceable character from that visual novel. It's a shame because she is easily one of the funniest characters in the series, and I would have easily taken a route for her over Akko or Reina. Hinami from Nukatashi seemed like the type of character that would just be a joke lolly character, but she ended up being surprisingly more than that. Of course, she was still pretty funny, even if it was just mostly the characters making fun of her for being a lolly, but I liked her role as the heart of the group, taking some part of the surprisingly wholesome moments in the whole visual novel, even with some of the villain heroines. In my opinion, She's easily the best Lolly Nason kicker that visual novels have created so far, even better than Ushio from Marshmallow. Mikan from Wanko to Karaso is definitely my favorite Animal Girl character. Even though I said as such already with Cinnamon, since I'm not really a fan of furry like characters, Mikan more than makes up for that for her super wholesome story and development. It's nothing super amazing, but seeing someone who starts off super shy and becoming an outgoing, helpful dog girl, especially in the setting, was just really nice to see developed. Akane from King Koi Golden Love Rich was surprisingly consistently enjoyable Genki Girl. While I think she's kind of held back due to just being stuck in a side route, I thought she definitely stood out compared to the other characters due to her wholesomeness and surprisingly really good confession scene and arc. Koharu from Senren Banka is one of the most dedicated characters I've seen from a Yuzusoft official novel. I kind of wish she wasn't just limited to just being random cousin incest because her personality on a main heroine would have been really great. Saber from Fate Stay Night is one of my favorite fictional female knight characters. I think she may have been the one to even get me into this archetype. She just has a solid mix of badass action and interesting backstory and development. Shirley from Amairo Isle Knots is one of the few untranslated characters on this list. Of all the Yuzusoft main title heroines, she easily fits the most of my quirky weirdo characters with her hilarious use of perverted imaginations of her friends. She's honestly only brought down because she kind of has that early mid Yuzusoft style of humor of protagonist pervert shaming that's unfair, but thankfully it's not too much. Aoi from Totono or You and Me and Her a Love Story in theory should have been an A tier if not S tier for me. Natural Plus really knows how to make weird girls that appeal to me. She was both hilarious and surprisingly wholesome at times. Unfortunately, she took that uh, whole wholesome aspect a little too far because I just really really hate NTR which is basically the only thing heavily bringing her down from one of my all-time favorites. Corona from A Sky Full of Stars was easily my favorite heroine of the original main four. I mostly liked her mix of being the most openly affectionate to the main protagonist, as well as the only character in the original having a unique astronomy goal related that did not have to do with stargazing and instead had to do with meteor sound tracking, which is pretty something cool that I'd never heard of. I also like that her character actually had character development related to her relationship with Saya. Shion from Higarashi easily had my favorite base personality of the main girls and story of them in the series. Her personality being kind of a tease was pretty fun, but her arc, especially in episode 5, is still one of the most memorable parts of the whole series, and hell, possibly by anything by written by Ryukushi07. It's just unfortunate she just has the issue of being the least recurring main character screen-wise time. I can understand why people would hate Chris from Majikoi, she doesn't start off great, especially towards the end of the common route, and even kind of messes up a few heroin routes. However, I liked her development specifically from the common route, and other developments she gets in the routes where she's actually good throughout the series. She's definitely not my favorite Magical character, but she's definitely fun to have around, especially when the main character Yamato makes fun of her. Riho from Deer Drops was a character that would have been A tier if I made this tier list 5-10 to 10 years ago. I just really like her openly blunt, savage bitch personality, where she just does what she wants. Since then, I've met similar characters that are more likable than her, so she's not as special, but she's definitely still one of the more stick-out parts of one of my favorite visual novels, Deer Drops. 
Kokoro from Majikoi started off as a top three potential Majikoi character with her hilarious, over-the-top, smug, rich personality. Over time, she became a bit too much of a joke character for my liking, but she was definitely still funny. I like that her route in Majikoi S actually had her developed for once. It's just, too, it's just too bad her development was kind of limited and her route just turned into a Nuki gay. Sumika from Muvlove Love is a very interesting case of extremes. Like many people, I'm not really a fan of Muvlove Love Extra, but Sumika was one of the few characters I actually found kind of funny and one of the few characters that actually had romantic chemistry interactions with Takaru, even if it was mutual abuse. Her main positive is, is her taking part of what may be my favorite emotional moment in any visual novel in Muvlove Love Alternative. Unfortunately, in her after story for Extra in Photon Flowers was easily the lowest point of her character where she was being incredibly unreasonable. Before I get into my top favorite female characters in visual novels, I'm going to go into a quick small section I'm going to call Honorable Potentials. Basically, these are my top 10 heroines that I've been interested in but just have not finished enough their visual novel to properly rank yet. I have almost zero interest in reading Suba Hibi, but one of the things that's keeping me interested is Kimika. She just seems like the type of character that'd be quirky in a weird, wholesome, but dark way. Toko from Kara no Shoujo, or The Shell, seems like an interesting, mysterious, quirky main heroine. I'm not into the whole age gap romantic relationship thing, but I'm still interested in her personality regardless, as well as her role in the serious mystery story. I heard Shizuku from Summer Pockets has this weird boob elitist humor, which seems like a type of quirky joke I might actually like. Outside of that, I think people say her route and reflection boo is good, but I don't remember. Even though Sakura no Uta is untranslated, I'm actually much more interested in reading it than Tsubahibi, because Skaji apparently made a moege like story towards the beginning that seems like my cup of tea before he gets to the typical philosophical stuff. The other good thing about it is that there's at least two childhood friends, and I would say the redhead Rin slightly interests me more, but I'm definitely interested in both of them. I'm decently far into Newton and the Apple Tree, and I'm on the fence whether to consider Lavi a notable character for the list. On one hand, she is a quirky, kind of amusing character, mad scientist, and has some feels. On the other hand, Newton, in general, just has a case where almost all the characters just feel like they're missing something, and she sort of falls into that, but we'll just have to wait and see until I actually finish her route. Al from Summer Pockets apparently has this amusing humor where she's low-key kind of a closet pervert, and has the same voice actress as some of my other favorite characters from visual novels like Corona from A Sky Full of Stars. I'm not really interested in Alisoft games because of how gameplay heavy they are, but I'm interested in Dona Dona because of its unique setting, but also because it has Antenna, who seems like peak quirky weird character that would heavily fit my tastes. I admit I was also intrigued when I saw the uh, Minecraft H scene of her. Every time I say I'm interested in Summer Pockets, most people predict that Sumugi would be my favorite character since she's supposedly the closest to Kotori from rewrite personality-wise. The only thing I know about her is that she's the quiet type and has this Mugyu tick, but other than that, I don't really know much about her. From like the 15 minutes I've read of 9-9 episode 1, I'm actually much more interested in Miyako than the fan favorite Sora. Sora is just kind of an annoying gremlin, while Miyako actually seems like a solid dede dede type of character that seems like it would fit me, but we'll see how she turns out. And now we get into the A tier, which is basically all the characters I consider just great all around. Mayu from Riddle Joker is just one of the most excellently well-rounded Yuzusoft characters I've seen to date. She has a good mix of tropes, being a mix of the older sister type, mildly quirky with her being scientifically minded, and gets surprisingly dede dede when you get into her route. But she also has a pretty good story related to why she's held herself back in school. A long time ago, when Majikoi was one of the few slice-of-life visual novels I've read, Miyako was in the running for top 5 favorite visual novel heroines ever. Since then, I've cooled off on her quite a bit, because while she's still funny, there's just been better cases of quirky and openly perverted female characters, and I would say the main thing that keeps her back is that despite her consistent humor, she is just overall kind of too creepy. That said, what keeps her in A tier is the fact that I still really really like the development she gets in her route in the original Majikoi and S. Chinatsu from Koikari Love for Hire is pretty easily the funniest female tsundere for me in visual novels. I don't like humor from tsundere's in anime or visual novels very often because they usually rely on the heroines being bipolar and just hitting the main character when they're angry and such, especially when the main character does supposedly something perverted. However, Chinatsu is kind of the opposite. She's tsundere because she's kind of sexually frustrated who, and just wants an older brother for once to dote on her. 
A lot of these scenes where she emphasizes this are really hilarious. I actually liked her more than her quirky sister, Konatsu, just because I thought this unique aspect of uh, Sundere humor was just excellently done and really fits Asa Project's hilarious, savage, weird humor. Asaho from Hoshizoro no Momoya is one of my favorite Dede Dede characters in visual novels. I find that surprisingly, even though I like the Dede Dede trope, there aren't that many that I straight up like a lot, but Asaho is just one of the few that actually does the trope pretty well while still having an actual personality and goals besides just loving the main character. The actual drawing her out probably could have been more interesting, and she does occasionally fall into the trap of being mean to the protagonist for no reason, but nowhere near the other characters. Kanai from Full Metal Demon Muramasa is pretty easily my favorite Nitro Plus character and Muramasa character. Remember how I said Aoi from Totono had potential to be my favorite because of how quirky she was? Well, Kanai takes that and runs away with it really hilariously while actually being consistently important and good character. Maybe not as deep as the other three main heroines of Muramasa, but still like her in a route regardless. Alistia from Primal X Hearts 2 is going to be the start of what will be a recurring theme in this A tier, me really liking wholesome shy girls with good character development. This blonde girl has a minor quirk of everyone in the student body basically being afraid of her because she sucks at making smiling faces and just looking scary instead. I like seeing her development of becoming more open and having the student body able to see who she truly is. It's nice to see how the main character influences this development and her wholesome interactions with him in the common route. I just wish her actual route had a little bit more to it besides just slight romantic dialogue and a lot of sex scenes. Kazuki from Grisaya only has two flaws for me. She doesn't appear enough and she has a really sussy flashback scene. Otherwise, I quite like that for once we have a kind of quirky but incredibly intelligent overconfident girl as a visual novel heroine. I've always liked girls who are super blunt but still clearly have a soft side and, well, Kazuki only keeps it for a few people, but it's nice to when she does show it to the few people she actually cares about. Outside of that, I just like her status as the overconfident wild card since, since she resolves issues in a very entertaining way. Kyoko from Amatsutsumi is the second stop on our wholesome shy girl development train. In this case, she has the benefit of Amatsutsumi's ladder route structure, so her development is canon as long as you don't romance Kokoro. I really like her development related to guilt, related to her old childhood friend, and while she was a little bit too subservient to the main character and Mana a bit much, I, th I still thought this aspect of her was oddly endearing in its own way. For some reason, there's not that many well-done friends-to-lovers romantic developments, but Rina from Furudaba does it super well for me. I tend to like Smee's humor style, and I like how and, and a lot of it tends to be because of an overly perverted, savage main character. Rina from Furudaba is the only character in this game that basically goes along with the main character and is pretty funny on her own. But I also like that the way they developed from friends to lovers was pretty nice, memorable, and felt surprisingly natural. She also had surprising development related to her parents towards the end of the route that I actually wish got expanded on more. As much as I like Rin and Saber for being badasses, my favorite girl from Fate Stand Out is definitely Sakura. The cooking slice of life scenes with Sakura were ones that I actually low-key actually loved. I guess this is just the precursor for me being a dirty moe gay fan. But Sakura also had really interesting development once you get into her route. Maybe a bit darker than I was expecting, but still interesting regardless. I just really liked the wholesome interactions between her and Shiro, and I just thought she and him had the easily my favorite romance from the Type Moon series. Eika from Yume Miru Kusui is a very extreme case of a shy girl getting development, in the case that you actually see her being bullied. It does make you pity her, especially since bullying is something that's surprisingly kind of rare to see in a dramatic way in visual novels. But what really made Ayaka one of my favorites is the development she gets once she gets into a relationship with the main character, especially the catharsis scene that happens at the climax of her route. Sayori from Doki Doki Literature Club is pretty easily my favorite western original visual novel character. At first she just seems like your typical Genki girl childhood friend character, however she turns much more than that being one of the few cases in any visual novel I've read where we've actually seen mental health done in an extremely realistic, down to earth, yet fascinating way. While I wasn't a fan of how her story ended in the original DDLC, the canon DDLC side stories more than made up for that, showing more of Sayori and her deep mental state more when interacting with the other main girls. Chiffon from Meteor World Actor is definitely one of my favorite stoic, quirky, weird characters in visual novels. Her quirkiness is a little more low-key at first, and I like that she's one of the few characters that's actually nice to the, to the main protagonist. 
even though he's kind of a dick to basically everybody. She has a lot of random funny scenes like how on her route she slams into the wall because she moves a lot in her sleep and gets addicted to the universe's version of Viagra for plot reasons. She's just a funny, quirky character to be around, just not quite a top tier favorite. Mari from Renai X Royale might just be the stupidest childhood friend character I've seen, and I love it. I think someone like her in real life would probably just be annoying to be around, but in a comedy heavy visual novel like Renai X Royale, I just thought she was constantly hilarious, constantly saying what was on her mind in a savage way, being ridiculously openly affectionate to the main character, using her status as a childhood friend to one-up the other girls. She also just has some of the funniest, derpiest sprites I've ever seen in visual novels. Bonus points for having one of the most hilarious H scenes I've seen in a visual novel. Yukie from Majikoi is one of the most popular characters from that series for good reason. She continues the ongoing trend of me having this A tier being full of wholesome shy girl development. In this case, Yukie has got a bunch of funny quirks that makes her stick out, like wanting to make 100 friends, and that she uses ventriloquism as a coping mechanism for her loneliness, but it's usually done for hilarity to unleash her secret savage thoughts. I love that her route is all about her finally getting the friends that she wanted, but she even gets shades of this development in other routes, which is always wholesome to see. Bonus points for her being a top 5 most powerful character canonically in the whole series, yet being modest about it. Sasa from Marshmallow All the Way Home is a great mix of the quirky character archetype I like, as well as the wholesome shy girl development train that I've been ranting on about in A tier. Her negative self-esteem rants are oddly amusing just because of how quirky she makes them every single time. But all it does is just make it so when she actually gets proper development, it's extremely wholesome. Like all the main heroines, her out is kind of brought down by dumb romantic misunderstandings and miscommunications. But thankfully Sasa's had one of the least dumb ones, and of all the main four heroines, I couldn't help but root for her the most. Sachi from Shara no Kuni straight up has my favorite character development from any visual novel. She has an oddly relatable flaw in terms of being overly lazy, which is heavily explored upon in her chapter, and I still haven't seen anything like this in the 15 years I've been reading visual novels. Honestly, the only real flaw with her is that while her personality isn't bad, it's just kind of a generic Genki girl, I guess? She's basically only this high because I really love her character development in the chapter that she stars in. Risa from Wanko to Karaso is an amusing case where my favorite girl from a dog girl centric VN is actually one of the human owners. Risa is a simple girl on the surface who's just a rather happy person who has a lot of wholesome scenes related to the main protagonist and becoming a new dog owner. But she also has some hilarious scenes like how she gets caught being a big pervert, but actually gets surprising development due to this, due to the protagonist's past, and overall just really love the relationship between her and the main protagonist. Sakai from the Magic Koi series was one of the biggest surprises for me in recent history. She now easily has my favorite Majikoi route in the many sequels and fanzics of the original. I liked how she brought back the big 4 diva concept that was brought back in the original Majikoi, and also her story about her extreme unluckiness was almost treated like a realistic mental block of sorts that she had to overcome to get back to form. Plus points for her superpower being super speed. I've always been a fan of that kind of power as a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. Asuka from Aokana is probably my favorite overall Dede Dede girl from visual novels. I like to jokingly call her the Dede Dede female version of Goku from Dragon Ball. She's openly affectionate to the main character, super nice to everyone she meets, but always has a love for competition, and many people like to call her a Mary Sue for getting ridiculously good at flying circus really quickly, but all it did was just make any flying circus fight with her really hype, so I didn't mind that. Bonus points for her taking part of what may be my favorite confession scene in any visual novel. Wanko from Majikoi is not only one of the most likable Genki girls I've seen in visual novels, she also has one of the best, most surprisingly emotional routes in any visual novel I've read. Given her rather fun and humorous, likable personality, you'd be surprised what her route contains. It has a very unique story about growing up that goes in directions that you wouldn't expect given her character, and I really, really loved it. I can't blame anyone for putting Wanko anything but in their top three, or just one of their favorite routes and characters from the Majikoi series. Yuri from Kunado Chronicles is one of my favorite Cinderes and visual novels. Unlike Chinatsu from Koikari, who I loved for being hilarious, I like Yuri because she represents one of the best cases of the classic tsundere trope. She, she starts off very soon soon, but for an actual good reason, and isn't really unreasonable, considering that the main guy just came out of nowhere and got affection for the main title girl. However, over time, thanks to the main character, she's able to become someone notable of her own. You can see the development of this through her chapter, which thankfully is through the latter route, which makes it even better since it's the first one. So most of her development is actually canon for once. I also really liked her side route development, surprisingly. Rare family bonds. Bonus points for her taking advantage of the Kunado thing of where the girls 
have to be the tops of the romantic relationships, and Yuri by far being the best at taking advantage of this. Kazusa from Under One Wing is probably still my favorite tsundere in visual novels, but it's close. Unlike Yuri, who I loved because of her development, I just liked Kazusa because she's just one of the most reasonable tsundere's I've seen in visual novel right from the beginning. While she still has her typical insecure, angry, frustrated soon moments, she's by far the least willing to just hit the main protagonist for stupid reasons like accidental sexual things that wasn't even the main protagonist's fault. And she's even willing and she's even willing to properly apologize when she recognizes things are actually her fault. She has solid, but maybe not the best development in her route, and part of it was due to it being short, but I still quite liked it, and it was easily the best route in Under One Ring. Toriko, or usually known as the Student Council President from the Majiko series, is probably not gonna be most people's favorites, or hell, probably not someone people actually remember. But when you consider that she's by far the quirkiest character in a user in a universe full of quirky characters, that's actually gonna make her stick out and appeal specifically to someone like me who loves hilarious weird characters. Throughout the series, Toriko has like maybe 30 to 50 lines tops, but the vast majority of them are hilariously broken Japanese or English. I'm pretty much guaranteed to get a hilarious laugh anytime she's on screen, especially in Magikoi S and A where she has one of the goofiest sprites in the whole series, including that strange outfit. What actually helps her though is that in Magikoi A5, she has a surprisingly wholesome role in Takai's route which just helped bump her up even higher for me. Hikari from Harem Kingdom is one of my favorite childhood friends in the pure hilarity department. Unlike Mari who's just really loud and stupid, Hikari just has a plain savage type of humor taking advantage of Smee's classic humor style to the fullest. She also has a surprisingly great emotional plot twist that I was not expecting to see in her route, and it was actually kind of amusing to see how her and the main character were amusingly romantically awkward up until college, and it took an isekai harem of all things for them to finally get together. Honestly, after reading her Fantasy route, it just made me sad that she didn't have her own single route from the beginning because she could have been even higher on my girl rankings if she had a more traditional route with Smee's typical wholesome romance progression. Wakana from Savit of the Witch, to me, is the perfect representation of a tomboy in visual novels. She's extremely blunt and willing to hang out with the boys as much as the girls, but she also has a very openly caring side, also being very much in touch with her own preferences. She also easily has my favorite side route in any visual novel, having a very simple guitar teaching course, a concert, and one of the most hilarious recurring jokes. It helps that the romance has some decently mild twists as well. Erika from Umineko is pretty easily my favorite character from that series, but she's also my favorite female villain in fiction, possibly even my favorite villain overall. I already thought Beatrice was pretty entertaining with her trolling, but Erika took it to the next level by straight up being a bitch to like basically everybody besides her masters. From her random English obsession over duct tape and just being super over the top in terms of flexing her supposed intellectual superiority was extremely entertaining to watch from start to finish. Shizuru from Rewrite is pretty easily not only my second favorite Rewrite character, but also pretty easily my second favorite key character. Every time I think of Shizuru, I think of her as one of the most pure, wholesome characters I've seen in a visual novel or in even fiction. Of all the wholesome shy characters in this A tier, Shizuru unfortunately has the least amount of character development, but more than makes up for it by being by far the most wholesome, just generally being pure joy to always be around. Anytime she's on screen, she has mildly quirky jokes like her love mackerel, random English like good taste, being okay with having a can of food on her head, and just being extremely affectionate to Kotaro, the main character in her own way, in addition to having some of the most amusing facial reactions despite her being a shy person. Honestly, she's pretty much only held back by me not really liking the ending to her route, which thankfully had nothing to do with her actual character, she just maybe didn't get the development I was hoping for. Sheena from Sankaku Renai is one of my favorite female perverts and female nerd characters in fiction. What helps is that she's extremely open about her love for eroge and visual novels, and the way that she tells the world about it, and how she makes comparisons whenever she makes jokes about things. She's constantly hilarious and oddly relatable, it just says something when a few female Eroge fans I know or have had in the past see Sheena as something of a spiritual animal. She's just that relatable and hilarious. Honestly, the only thing that really holds her back is that she felt like too much of a parody character even by Asa Project standards to the point it's kind of hard to see her as a real person since she went a little over the top with her uh, gimmick, which is still hilarious, but it's just hard to take her seriously as a romantic character and see her as a real person because of it. And now we're going to go into S tier. These are characters that surpass just being great and are now some of my all time favorites. Ayumi from Sujiro San no Junai Road is pretty easily my favorite character that does not have a route in visual novels. 
On the surface, she just seems like a nice class rep character with the, some quirky glasses, but that alone was enough for me to get intrigued by her. But what really sold me was when she became I, the main heroine's BFF, her extreme motherly-like tendencies came out in a quirky way, and I couldn't help but be endeared by her. What helps is that she's the best wing woman I can think of in visual novels, supporting I in everything from romance to her being a good student while still being a good student council president. Every time I think of Sujido Sando Junai Road, despite it being a delinquent heavy setting, I always think of how much I really enjoyed Ayumi and I'm just sad that she does not have a route. Lena from Senren Banka is pretty easily my favorite foreigner character in visual novels. While many foreigner characters are just joke characters that are known for their English spamming, Lena does have that, admittedly, which is still pretty great and hilarious. But Lena is thankfully also well-rounded by just being a generally very wholesome person. The writing likes to point out that she's openly physically affectionate, kind of as a contrast to the more typical Japanese setting where the other main Japanese girls are more conservative. But it just makes it so the relationships between her and the other characters feel that much more better and wholesome. I'm actually surprised with the little story we actually have in Sinurabanka, that they were actually able to naturally fit in Lena, and she finds a way to be able to help with the plot in her own way. What helps is that she has the most wholesome interactions with the main character once they actually get into a romance. Maybe not the most developed character in Sinurumbanka, but of all the heroines from Sinurumbanka and heck even Yuzusof, Lena's always the first I would think of that I would type of girl that I'd want to date in real life. Naruko from Bokuten is pretty easily my favorite childhood friend in terms of emphasizing the typical childhood friend tropes and doing them much better. I liked her right from the beginning of her jumping through the main character's window with just a shirt and underwear on and having her savage yet openly caring dialogue with the main character, but also having her own personality like liking to help other girls with their love problems at school. She's also surprisingly really interesting and reveals in terms of her role as a childhood friend. Honestly, the only issue I have with her in the visual novel is that she kind of just isn't in the picture for a good amount of it until it's her route again, and I think she could have benefited from more screen time to make her route hit harder. Ayami from If You Love Me Then Say So or Suki Suki is an extreme case. I think Suki Suki as a visual novel is just extremely bad with extremely unfunny, unlikable characters and humor, but Ayami randomly contrasts that with being one of the most wholesome and amusing characters I've seen in a visual novel. Like right from the beginning you just know her as this rich girl who's obsessed with a fake McDonald's clone and just generally loving fast food. I also like that she's a gamer nerd, so when she gets super into her video games, she has some funny English lines among other things. She's just also extremely nice to the main character which helps her sticks out and is almost never mean to the protagonist for no reason unlike the other main heroines. At the same time, she still very much isn't just a boring Jerry Jerry character and has her own interests. Honestly, the main thing holding her back is I hate the direction her route went. Someone like her deserved much better than what she got and if she wasn't written by a chewable soft, I think she would have been even higher. Misaki from Nukatashi has become one of my favorite female characters due to how consistently hilarious she is. Unlike Sheena from Sankaku Renai, who's a similar type of perverted character that likes eroge and sexual stuff, Misaki has a lot of great jokes around here, from her love of anal stuff to how she makes fun of herself for having no presence or supposedly being fat, but also at laughing at other characters for their flaws but in a friendly way of course. Unlike Sheena from Sankaku, Misaki has actual issues in character development, Maybe not something that's super great, but it's enough to actually make her feel like a real person. And despite the wacky nature of her route in Nukatashi 1, they still found a way to make her relationship with the main protagonist June in a surprisingly wholesome way given the circumstances of the story. Bonus points for her being the vehicle driver of the group and her having constantly amusing scenes with that. Hinami from A Sky Full of Stars is a character that at one point I might have considered at the highest tier on this list, but she was just slightly outdone by a non-visual novel character having similar traits to her. That said, I still really, really like her. She has the unfortunate case of being a side character that does not get around until the fan disc. Her screen time overall in the original Sky Full Stars was very limited. However, she more than makes up for it by making full use of every minute on screen by having some quirky, tuny moments where she just kind of chews the scenery, but it's really random and funny. But thankfully, she also doubles up on this by low-key being one of the biggest sweethearts in the whole series. She's more than willing to help out people that she cares about in a very modest way, while still keeping her trademark quirkiness. This shows up great in her route, despite its unfortunate short length, and even in things like Interstellar Focus, where she's not even a love interest. And now we're in the final tier, the SS tier, where we go even further beyond favorite characters. We're at a point where I love these two characters so much that they're basically untouchable even by my other favorite female characters. As said, there are only two characters on this list, the first being Kotori from Rewrite. 
She was one of my trademark characters I was known for loving way back in the day, purely by her design and, and even before I read the visual novel, I read the VNDB tag she had for her and I just had a feeling I would like her. Little did I know, she would become one of my favorite quirky characters with her constant English and joking around in the common route. Kotori is very non tropey with her very unique humor that's constantly unpredictable but very funny. There's a reason people know her for the shake it now baby now quote. She's also just a surprisingly wholesome and caring person, especially for the club and her main childhood friend Kotaro and of course her family. But as you may expect from Ki, she has her surprisingly deep and dark backstory and leads to some pretty interesting development you see in both her route and a few future routes. It does make her admittedly kind of frustrating to talk to at times, but it just makes it when you get to know her and the reasons why she's acting the way that she did and makes her all the more interesting because of it. It all culminates when you actually read her Harvest Fester route, which probably ties together the romantic stuff that was kind of left at the end of her original route, with it having some of the most wholesome romance stuff I've seen from a key visual novel or any romance story, to be, especially knowing the context of what you learn about her. Overall, Kotori is just someone who's always great to have on screen, whether it's for humor or finding out more about the deepness of her past and how it relates to her romance and the magic of the story. The final character and the one who's been my favorite visual novel heroine for several years now is Mashiro from Making Lovers. I was already interested in Making Lovers before reading it due to a visual novel with almost all adult age heroines. Right from the beginning, Mashiro intrigued me due to her being a gamer girl, but little did I know she would fit my taste a lot more than even that. I was expecting someone similar to Kotori, maybe someone with some quirky, jokey dialogue, but she somehow goes even more over the top than Kotori herself. She may have less English, but she's just more unpredictable, random, crazy, weird, and just has a really amusing trolley side. This makes her constantly hilarious, especially as she has the benefit of being by Smee, who tends to have very hilarious comedy due to how savage it is. But more importantly, it feels like this character was basically written for me. In addition to her quirky, hilarious dialogue, which I already love a lot, she's a big gamer girl as I already said. She's surprisingly affectionate in her own way without being overbearing defines being non tropey and just very different in general. I have really similar tastes in foods to her, etc. When you combine all that and the fact that she's an adult age heroine for once, Masha was just a super big fun character that was basically made to appeal to me. That said, I can't blame pe most people for her not being their favorite since she is very different, but in a way that's exactly what makes her appealing to me. She's just everything I would want from a visual novel love interest for my personal preferences. And there you have it, roughly 160 female visual novel characters tiered for my preferences. As said, this is a visual novel girl tier template with over a thousand characters, so if you're interested in making your own, I'd be very interested in seeing other people's lists. You can find this template list in the description or in, in a pinned comment. Otherwise, what are your opinions on the characters that I chose to make a tier for in this video? Feel free to leave a comment below.